You're listening to the Chad HD Show On Demand. Good for you. Now download the KFYO app and listen live weekday afternoons, 5 to 7 p.m. Central. Broadcasting from the great state of Texas, this is the Chad Hasty Show. News and views with a Lone Star perspective. You can sound off during the show by sending Chad a text at 806-680-2790. That's 806-680-2790. Or call in at 1-800-687-0790. Now, here's Chad Hasty. Good evening, Lubbock, Amarillo, Abilene, Wichita Falls, Midland, Odessa, Dallas, Fort Worth, down in Houston, over in El Paso, and anywhere else, inside or outside the great state of Texas, wherever you may be listening, welcome in. To the Chad HD Show, thank you for uh, tuning in today. Glad to have you with us on this Friday. We do appreciate you being out there today and tuning in. And uh, hopefully you're, uh, well, maybe you're on your way home. Maybe you're getting ready to wrap up uh, work. Maybe you're uh, you're still working, still getting some stuff done before the weekend. Maybe Maybe you're not going to have a weekend. Maybe it's just full of work, uh, but you're still listening to us. Uh, We appreciate you doing so. Maybe you're stuck in uh, a little bit of traffic somewhere trying to get home, or maybe you're already at the house ready to grill out and have a good, good weekend. Uh, We do appreciate you tuning in on this Open Line Friday, which means you can uh, get in touch with us and really sound off on any of the topics, anything at all, any of the headlines of the day end of the week that you want to get into. Well, of course, on Fridays, we uh, cover some politics. We cover a little sports. We cover a little technology, everyday life, anything making news out there in your world uh, as we get you ready for the weekend. Uh, we just like to re- we, we relax a little bit uh, here on the program. We, we throttle down a little bit and, uh, and just uh, you know, prepare ourselves and prepare you for the upcoming weekend. Uh, maybe if you're if there's uh, some good festivals you're going to, uh, maybe uh, you got uh, uh, you can uh, you know, you know, let us know about that. People can travel in for those. Uh, it, we have some great fall festivals uh, that break out across the state. And of course, uh, this weekend uh, fall begins. What on Sunday uh, is the the first official day of fall. So uh, so you've got that. That's going on and uh, here, at least here in Lubbock and up in the Panhandle, uh, temperatures will kind of feel a little fallish uh, when come, coming up on Sunday. I think there's like a slight chance of rain on Sunday, and uh, we've got some cooler temperatures that'll be in. And then for other parts of the state, uh, it won't cool down as much, but uh, you'll have highs in the uh, in the 80s and uh, maybe even low 90s in some parts of the state. Uh, eventually, eventually. It'll get there where it starts cooling off and feeling uh, really good uh, outside. So uh, we've got a lot to get into on the uh, show today. We've got uh, the fallout from uh, County Judge Curtis Parrish's press conference yesterday. We'll get into that, some of the things that were said. And, uh, I'll, you know, my thoughts on what um, the county judge had to say. And also the sheriff, uh, he was part of the uh, press conference as well. Also, the uh, Washington Post, uh, they already have a prediction story, a prediction story uh, about uh, what's going to happen on election night. Uh, We'll talk about that. Kamala Harris uh, in the news uh, as well, of course, with the 2024 presidential race. We'll get into that. Uh, A little bit of Trump news as well. The U.S. Secret Service making headlines uh, today as uh, they're taking some bl- a lot of blame, uh, mainly the blame for the assassination attempt on uh, Trump uh, weeks ago. And so uh, we'll get into that topic 
and uh, well, whatever else pops up between now and then, we'll uh, we'll be getting into uh, all of that. Uh, of course, we want to hear from you on all the issues of the day, any of the uh, issues uh, that have uh, sprung up throughout the week. You can always text in at eight zero six six eight zero. Two seven nine zero. That's eight zero six six eight zero two seven nine zero. And uh, you can also always get in touch with us uh, on the phones at one eight hundred six eight seven zero seven ninety. That's one eight hundred six eight seven zero seven ninety. You can give us a call. Sound off on anything. The first voice you hear from when you dial in today, Nick. The first voice you hear from Nick, are you, uh, are, are you having an okay day? I, I am. Today's a, uh, I would say it's a good day. Yeah. Today, it's a good day. Uh, I was a little alarmed yes. when we uh, when we started the show. So our our wonderful, extraordinary engineer here. Yes. Uh, he's been doing a lot of work. He's very uh, hard worker. Yeah. And he does excellent work. Yes. Um, but I think recently, he did some work on the uh, the board in here. Uh huh. And uh, the volume is a little is a little different. I sound <laughs> I, I I sound extremely loud today yeah, in my yeah, headphones. Yeah, compared to where I normally am. Right. I, like I can the, assure the you the audio sounds off. <laughs> I assure you, hey, hey, if the board is correct, we're all good. Okay. Levels are all good. All right. We're all good. We're not blowing anybody's eardrums out. Yeah, like I'm having to adjust yeah. where I'm at on my headphones because as was I. Yeah, I, I, I had to do that exact same thing. You started talking, boom. Yeah, it almost went deaf in one ear. I was just going to blame uh, Matt Tro, to be yeah. honest with you. Well, that's what we usually do. Sure, here yeah. is uh, you know when in doubt we have a saying. In fact, I think it's a post. It was a plaque somewhere. Anything that's messed with yeah. in yeah. the studio, yeah, it's it's Matt Crow. It's Matt Crow. Yeah, and so I just assumed he went over there and like uh, threw something at the board and, yeah. and messed up the audio. I think he spilled some coke on purpose. Yeah. Uh, all Just drizzled it all over. So did we get a um, boost in audio? Is that what we're, we're – did we get a boost? Sure sounds like An it. audio boost maybe? Okay. But you know what? I think only yeah. you and I get to enjoy that. Yeah. So uh, okay, well, that, a little present for us. Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, I was fine. I was <laughs> like, whoa, hey. Yeah. yeah. Surprise. I had to reach over just adjust yeah. the, the, head, the headphones a little bit. Just, yeah. you know, a little – but hey, we're live. Yeah, we're good. We're, we're, we're good. reaching everyone. Life is good. Exactly. We're, it's a our, Friday. Yes. Exactly. Absolutely. Now we could have a guest that calls us shortly. Maybe we'll see. Yeah. It'll be a surprise for everybody. <laughs> It'll be a surprise for everybody. We'll see. Uh, so, so we may have a guest today, uh, but we'll uh, we'll let you know if that happens. And if Nick goes away really quickly, uh, it's because he's having to answer the phones. Uh, but let me ask you this, Nick: are, are you ready? Do you have any big plans for the weekend? Um, I I don't think I do. No? I, th- I think you know a few errands here and there, a little uh, grocery shopping uh, at some point. But I don't I, I don't think so. I'm hoping uh, this week will be, uh, or perhaps this weekend will be uh, very laid back, um, relaxing. We have a little bit of weather coming in this weekend. Hopefully not too severe. Yeah. Um, if it is. Remember, if it's uh, if it reaches the uh, the Lubbock area, we will uh, KFYO will be the first to uh, alert everyone. Yes. In case you, uh, in case anyone's driving or traveling, or maybe they're at the fair, or they're at the fair, or they're at home, and they just you know what? People, What's going on outside? A lot of people will be out at the fair this yeah. weekend and yeah. uh, getting the the uh, the fried delicacies uh, that are out at the fair. Did you know they uh, there is a Lay's potato chip drink? The Texas State Fair is unveiling a Lay's potato chip drink. A potato drink. chip drink. Now, it's it's mm. it's also spicy. It's so they have hot honey <laughs> drizzled in there. They have a, a few other spices. Uh, I think it's carbonated. I think it's like a so, like a soft drink. Yeah. Uh, and it's topped with uh, uh, like a handful of Lay's original potato chips. Right. Um, I don't know if that's going to be popular. If I'm being honest, you you just never know because yeah. here's the deal: people will try it because oh, it's I at would the fair. It. Yeah, I try it, and it's something different. Yeah, and uh, now I I have had some different concoctions mm-hmm. uh, that have uh, that have sprung up at the uh, state fair, the Great State Fair of Texas. One of those uh, being the uh, what was it? Oh, yeah, the cotton candy beer, cotton candy beer. I think was one of them, and the funnel cake beer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the funnel cake beer 
delicious. The what is is it, so it's a it's a beer. It's a beer. Okay, and okay. it's just it it doesn't really taste like funnel cake, yeah. but it has like a tinge of sweetness to it, and you're like, okay, just an excuse to to drink a beer. It's I think. really just an excuse yeah. to have a beer. Yeah, yeah. and uh, same thing goes for the I think it was a cotton candy beer. Yeah, uh, where you taste it and go. Okay, a little bit of sweetness there, but overall, just a, a nice, refreshing. Now, again, you're also drinking this uh, at the state fair where it's about 95 degrees uh, and very sunny, very hot. Yeah. So maybe everything that is frosty and cold just tastes delicious at that point. That's one thing that I never understood. Why everyone's outside, it's it's normally warm, yeah, if not hot outside. It, to me, if I'm if I'm overheated, I don't want deep fried soaked in grease yeah a, a good mm. greasy corn dog delicious when it's 95 to sure. 105 degrees outside yeah i would like as you just said something refreshing yeah something cool well that's part of the greatness of the of the state fair uh is is that uh is that you just you just go for it you yeah. just go and then they have just yolo at the fair yeah, yeah they have cooling stations they've got indoor places you're fine you're good do they have the ones at like uh, at six flags where it's like the fan with the with the mist yeah, yeah they, they have got those? some of those Ooh, yeah well like they're, they're larger than that but oh. yeah they, they've got some of those yeah uh and then uh, now here at the the local fair right? and you have the local fairs uh i know that they've uh, you know put some uh, you know places to sit and you, you know you're always covered. nice yeah, yeah yeah so you got that uh you got that going on and of course yeah, you know, so those uh, a lot of people will be out at the South Plains Fair uh, this weekend, and uh, a lot of folks, uh, where depending on where they're listening to us, they'll be going to their own uh, little fair uh, as well. Yeah, you got fairs popping up all over the uh, the great state of Texas today. So that, or this weekend, so that's uh, that's good. It's, it's something that everyone likes to go to. So today we've got two running topics for you. Today uh, is uh, is National Queso Day. Which, Nick, I don't know about you, but a bowl of melted cheese always sounds good to me. I, I, I'm never turning down uh, a little bit of queso. So we ask you this, the best place in your city to get queso. Best place in your city to get queso. And then number two, best fair foods. Best fair foods. Uh, you can text in and uh, and let us know at 806 680 Two seven nine zero. That's eight zero six six eight zero two seven nine zero. When we come back, your phone calls, your text messages. We'll get to your running topics, the news of the day, and more. The Chad Hasty Show can be heard all over West Texas. Weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Tune in on News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO in Lubbock. News Talk 940 in Amarillo. News Talk 94.7 and 1470 KYYW in Abilene. And in Wichita Falls on News Talk 96.3 and 1290. The Chad Hasty Show. Make it a part of your drive home. Weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Hear that? That's the sound of your life. Perfectly imperfect. Beating in rhythm to the world you've created. But every time you drive after drinking, the music gets drowned out. Your life sounds pretty great. Don't let a buzz ruin it. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Don't drive buzzed. A message from Nitsa and the Ad Council. On the Chad HD Show. Thank you very much for tuning in today. Joining us on the phone, Senator Ted Cruz joining us here on the Chad HD Show. Senator Cruz, welcome back to the program. How are you today? Chad, I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself? Doing great. Appreciate you uh, taking some time to uh, join us. I, I guess we'll just start off with uh, you know how the, the the campaign season is going, and just to, to remind people, you're running for reelection. You've got a campaign out there. I know you've agreed to a, a debate. We'll talk about that uh, here in just a little bit. But what is the the state of the uh, state of the campaign uh, as we know it today? 
Well, listen, every two years, politicians say this is the most important elections of our lifetime. I got to say this one. Holy cow. <laughs> I, I think the states are are enormous. We, we are battling for the future of the country. I think it is critically important that we reelect Donald Trump as president. And, and if Kamala Harris becomes president, the people of Texas are in for a world of hurt for for a continuation and, and, and a worsening of the failed policies we've seen the last four years. And in my Senate race, I've got a very real Senate race. Chuck Schumer has been explicit. I'm his number one target in the country. And I got to tell you, the Democrats, Schumer and George Soros, they're spending over $100 million trying to beat me. They are saturating the airwaves with, with attacks. And, and we've seen multiple polls in the last few days showing it as a one-point or two-point or three-point race. And actually yesterday, for the first time ever, we had a poll come out that, that, that showed the Democrat winning by a point, leading in this race. So it is a serious fight, Chad. And I'll tell you, for your listeners, I need your help. I need you to come to TedCruz.org, make a contribution, because we are getting outspent brutally. So please come to TedCruz.org, give 25 bucks or 50 bucks or 100 bucks or whatever you can, because Schumer and Soros see Texas as the path to keeping a Democrat majority in the Senate. And this poll yesterday showing the Democrats winning has only emboldened them to put even more millions of dollars into Texas. Well, Senator, when you when you look at some of these polls that have been coming out, is it the is it the 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 ads that are because I don't see Colin Allred doing anything. I see Liz Cheney doing more for Colin Allred uh, than Colin Allred uh, actually campaigning. Uh, I mean, what 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 is it that is you do you think is you know, connecting to possible voters out there, and how are you combating that? What are you doing to to to, to combat that? Well, well, you're right that, that Colin Allred is not getting out there campaigning. He is running the exact same campaign Kamala Harris is. So both Kamala Harris and Colin Allred are hiding in Joe Biden's basement. They do almost no events. They do almost no media interviews. In the last seven weeks, Colin Allred has done one press conference. In the last seven weeks, I've done 20 press conferences. Now, there's a reason for the differential. The reason Congressman Allred is hiding from the press is the same reason Kamala Harris is. Their records are terrible. He is an extremely left-wing Democrat. His voting record the first four years in the House was 100 percent with Nancy Pelosi. He literally did not deviate on a single vote. He's voted repeatedly in favor of open borders, repeatedly in favor of defunding the police repeatedly against Texas jobs, against Texas energy, against Texas oil and gas. Just today, Chad, Congressman Allred voted in favor of the Biden-Harris mandate that two-thirds of all cars in America have to be electric by 2032. That is a direct assault on oil and gas in Texas, which provides millions of jobs in Texas. And it's also an assault on consumers. If you don't want your pickup truck to be electric, who the heck is Colin Allred to vote to force you to sell your car or sell your truck? You, you've agreed to a debate with Allred. Uh, what what are you most looking forward to exposing him on? Well, look, his record and my record. I, I think elections should be a contrast of the two candidates' records yeah. and the two candidates' vision for Texas. And there's a real difference between the two of us. The reason I've done 20 press conferences in, in the last six weeks or seven weeks is because I'm proud of my record. I've spent 12 years fighting every day for jobs, for freedom, for security. I've authored and passed 100 different pieces of legislation fighting for Texans, winning major victories in West Texas. I've been a champion for West Texas. So I-14 brand new interstate that is going to run from the Permian Basin through East Texas all the way east to the Atlantic Ocean. I was the lead author of the legislation creating I-14. That is going to produce thousands and thousands of new jobs and economic development in West Texas. I'm also the lead author of I-27, the brand new interstate that is going to run from Laredo north through West Texas, through the Panhandle, into New Mexico, ultimately all the way up to Canada. 
I, I authored that with Ben Ray Lujan, a Democrat from New Mexico, Cruz Lujan. We passed that into law. That, again, is going to produce thousands and thousands of jobs and, and investment in West Texas. So I'm looking forward in this debate to contrasting my record with Colin Allred's record, which is exactly Nancy Pelosi's record. It's voting for open borders. It's voting for letting criminals out of jail. And it's voting for more and more taxes and more and more job-killing regulations. That's not what Texans support, which explains why Congressman Allred doesn't want to answer any questions about his record. Senator Cruz, I've got about a minute uh, left. Uh, tell listeners where they need to go to get more information, how to follow you, and get more information on this campaign. Our, our website is tedcruz.org, tedcruz.org. I would encourage you to go to tedcruz.org, sign up to volunteer. We've got people knocking on doors, making phone calls, and make a contribution. Give 10 bucks or 25 or 50 bucks at tedcruz.org. You can also follow me on social media, on Twitter, and, and, and just use your voice. Defend West Texas values. Chad, this entire campaign is about three words. Keeping Texas, Texas. What we're doing is working here, and we've got to preserve it if we want to stay and keep the great state of Texas prosperous and safe if we want to secure the borders and keep our families and our kids safe. We've got to embrace common sense and not the radical views of the left of open borders and, and undermining law enforcement. Very good. Senator Ted Cruz, as always, appreciate your time. We look forward to seeing you out here soon, and uh, we'll talk to you again then. Thank you, my friend. God bless. Thank you. That's Senator Ted Cruz. We'll be right back. The Chad Hasty Show, weekdays 5 to 7 p.m. Sound off during the show by sending Chad a text at 806 806- Six eight zero two seven ninety. This message is from the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. VA disability compensation is a monthly tax-free payment to veterans who got sick or injured in the military and to veterans whose service worsened an existing condition. You may qualify for VA disability compensation for physical and mental health conditions that developed or worsened due to service. Learn more at va.gov slash disability. Ever tried balancing a dozen eggs in one hand while hopping on one foot? Or maybe juggling cats while riding a unicycle? Sounds ridiculous, right? But guess what? That's exactly what texting while driving is like. Your human brain only has the capacity to focus on one thing at a time. So when you're behind the wheel, give driving your undivided attention. Don't drive distracted. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. The news and talk of West Texas. News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO. You're listening to the Chad Hasty Show. All right, back on the Chad Hasty Show. Thank you very much for tuning in today. Your uh, running topics today, we uh, we ask you. Uh, your, uh, your, 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 the best place to get queso, uh, your, your favorite place to go and, uh, get it. Where is it? Uh, where's it at? And then, uh, your favorite, uh, your, your favorite fair foods. What are they? You can, uh, text in at 806-680-2790. Thanks again to, uh, Senator Ted Cruz for joining us here on the program. Always nice to hear from him. Uh, let's see. We'll get to the text line. Here in just a bit, have some folks weighing in. Uh, Democrats privately worry that the Teamsters non-endorsement is a warning sign. This out of Politico. Eight years after Trump shattered the blue wall, Democrats say he could do it again. Most polls show Kamala Harris tied or leading Trump in the critical battleground states of Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin after a commanding performance at the debate. Party leaders are projecting confidence publicly, but on the ground, a jittery elected officials, strategists, and allies are quietly pointing to warning signs for the vice president. 
The Teamsters withholding an endorsement from Harris this week after internal polling showed most of their respondents backing Trump is sparking fresh concerns the GOP nominee could have a higher-than-expected support among union members, especially men, labor leaders, and other sectors attest that, like in 2016 and 2020, the former president has maintained a grip on key parts of the rank-and-file despite his anti-union record. Privately, Democrats say Harris will uh, still has work to do to win over the older, white, working-class voters who make up a large portion of the electorate in the Rust Belt and have been hit by high prices. Quote, candidly, Trump has a solid base of working-class people that have bought into his message, said Jimmy Williams, president of the International Union of Painters and Allied Trades, which has endorsed Harris. It's movable, it's been moving, but it's not some tide that's been turned. Some Teamsters have questioned the methodology of polling, showing Trump winning a majority support among the union members. But one pro-Harris union official uh, who was granted uh, anonymity to speak freely, spoke in dire terms, said it was, uh, said this person, uh, they believe it was a red flag and reminiscent of the 2016 election. And really, when you dig into the data, there, there, are, some par- there are some parallels to the 2016 election in these states. Don't forget that Hillary Clinton was predicted to win all of these states in 2016. Hillary Clinton was predicted to win the election by a huge number. Remember, Hillary was predicted to have a landslide election. The New York Times on election day in 2016 put Hillary Clinton at a, what was it, a 99% chance of winning the election. All the the the, the national uh, uh, pollsters thought that this was going to go towards Hillary Clinton. And if you look at some of the data from back in 2016, you look at some of the data now, uh, Donald Trump is actually outperforming the 2016 numbers. He's outperforming the 2020 numbers. And so that's a good thing. Now, it doesn't mean it doesn't that doesn't mean it'll translate into actual votes, but it's a good thing for Trump that right now you have the 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 uh, national news media they're they're wanting everyone to think that Kamala Harris is uh, a slam dunk uh, candidate that she's going to win this thing. It's going to be easy for uh, her to win. I really think they're trying to depress Republican voters and make it to where Republican voters just give up and not turn out for their guy. I think that is uh, what the uh, what, what the uh, Democrat media is up to right now. And then just watch. If Trump does win this thing, uh, they'll blame the Electoral College because Kamala Harris may very well win the popular vote. She may win the popular vote. But right now, there, there have been plenty of signs Uh, that she may not win the Electoral College. And you're going to see the Democrats uh, absolutely attack the Electoral College. They will attack Republicans for being racist. They'll attack America for being bigoted and racist. Just watch. The the game plan is out there for this. And they'll try to say that somehow uh, Trump is not a legitimately elected president. And there will be some Democrats, I, I can almost guarantee it, that are they're going to try to do anything they can to stop Trump from being sworn in. They're going to try uh, some different games, uh, trying to say that uh, you know because he was found guilty, he can't actually be president. Just watch, just watch what the Democrats try to do if Trump actually wins this thing in November. Eight zero six six eight zero. Two seven nine zero. That's eight zero six six eight zero two seven nine zero. Texture. Uh, can we talk about the Niners today? No, we can't. We can't do that. Uh, we we never can do. We we can never talk about the San Francisco Forty uh, Nine ers. A another texture from uh, Abilene weighed in, saying the uh, queso at Torchies is uh, is good. The uh, white queso at Fuzzies also good. All right. Another uh, texture, Caprock Cafe in Lubbock. Oh, yeah, that's good stuff. 
a, another text. Uh, this one's interesting. Chad, I got one uh, for you. And on a follow, the, I guess, Sheriff's Department shot my dog last night. Wrong address. Uh, Sheriff's Department responded to an alarm out here. Thought it was, uh, thought uh, my place was it. Not suing. The investigation is ongoing. Well, that sucks. Sad to hear that. That's, uh, that's, that's never good. You don't want that to happen. 806-680-2790. You can weigh in on uh, any of the uh, any of the topics of the day. Oh, let's uh, get to this real quick. Uh, the uh, yesterday you had the the uh, county judge uh, Curtis Pierce. He held a press conference yesterday uh, along with the uh, sheriff and. Uh, The uh, UMC president, actually, I don't think he actually showed up. Uh, The story from KCBD. This is how they put it. Time is running out for Lubbock County leaders to vote on a property tax rate and budget for the next fiscal year under state law. If a tax rate isn't approved by September 30th, the no new revenue rate is automatically adopted. Two commissioners have skipped out of recent meetings, preventing a vote. Lubbock County Judge Curtis Parrish, along with Sheriff Kelly Rowe and UMC President Mark Funderburk, are calling for action on a new tax rate. Both commissioners have missed two meetings. For most items, uh, three uh, three of the uh, five members are needed for a quorum to approve the tax rate. Four members must be present. Parrish and Rowe highlighted what they believe are the consequences of adopting a lower rate. Uh, Parrish said to get to the no new revenue rate, we would have to make the deepest, most massive cuts in history. Over the summer, commissioners proposed a $7.5 million increase over the current budget to fund the proposed budget. The uh, proposed property tax rate is $35.8989 cents per $100 valuation, according to data published by the county. The average homeowner uh, with a homestead taxable value uh, that increased from $207,000 to $219,000 would pay $68 more to the county for the year. The total due uh, for a $219,000 property would be $787.82. The proposed rate matches the voter approval rate, uh, meaning that's the highest the county uh, can, or the highest that can be approved by commissioners without foreseeing an election. Parrish wants his colleagues to come back to work, to uh, come to a consensus. They've tried that. It, it, here, here's what's going to happen. If if Corley and Rackler go back to work and they're actually doing their jobs by staying away, despite what Curtis Parrish uh, might be saying out there, the constituents have been telling Corley and Rackler, we don't want this new tax rate. We do not want higher taxes. Uh, we want you to stay away. So they're doing their job. Parrish said, please come to work. We can work on this budget together. We can work from the dais and altering the budget to get a tax rate that we can all agree to. Well, okay, then you go ahead, uh, county judge, and you make the cuts. And then after you do that, after you get down to the no new revenue rate, why don't you call everybody back in to uh, get the job done? Bear said this will not just be a cut of $7.5 million in funding. In 2023, the court uh, pulled more than $7 million for the Juvenile Justice Fund balance to balance the county budget. It's an act he believes is not sustainable. Paris says it'll take funding away from roads and parks. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about roads and parks. Okay, uh, well, what, what roads? What exactly is going to be done? Because so far, the only cuts to roads are happening in the uh, in, in Corley's district and in Rackler's district. You're not cutting any other road projects out. If the voter approved bonds uh, for those road projects, those, uh, those are going to continue no matter what. So what exactly are we talking about here? Are we talking about uh, parks? That's what we're talking about? Again, I think there are a lot of folks in the county who would rather their property tax rate uh, not go up. Parish 
uh, says the uh, they'll take uh, funding away from roads and parks. Quote, it's ironic to me, the ones who are forcing the county to cut the tax rate are the ones complaining the most about having a cut uh, in roads and parks. You can't have one without the other. It's because you, Judge, are only targeting the roads and parks in their districts. You're not targeting anybody else. When we come back, we'll get to uh, more of this uh, from uh, from KCBD and the press conference yesterday, which, again, a lot was said, but eh, not really. Not really moving anybody, I don't think. We'll be right back. The titan of Texas talk radio, Chad Hasty, Talking with newsmakers and about the issues that matter to you. The Chad Hasty Show, weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Chad's show is also digital with the Chad Hasty Show podcast. The Chad Hasty Show podcast can be downloaded on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, and the Radio On Demand page at kfyo.com. The Chad Hasty Show, all across Texas during your drive home, weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. We are the boy band. Your tween made you see. We are the boy It's painful concert number three. We are the boy band. We're five and nineteen. We are the boy band. Always singing on key. You love your kids enough to take them to see their favorite uh, band. Love them enough to make sure they're buckled up in the back seat. Show them you love them. Keep them safe. Visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Chad HD show. A little bit more on uh, this press conference from the uh, from the county judge yesterday, in which uh, uh, th- th- he used a, a lot of uh, a lot of big words, a lot of emotion, talking about how his heart was hurting because of all this. He just wa- he just wants the county commissioners to go to work. If they'll just go to work. And then he made all these claims of doom and gloom if we don't have a tax increase. That if we don't have a a, a tax increase, then the bond rating of Lubbock County would be destroyed somehow. I, that's, I, I don't see how that's going to happen. Uh, he also, and he, he's done this a few times, where he equates... Corley and Rackler not going to the meetings to the Democrats in the Texas legislature who broke quorum. And it's not the same thing. It's not anywhere close to the same thing. It is a tool that Corley and Rackler are using to prevent a tax increase, to prevent a quorum, to prevent this from happening. It's a legal tool that they're using. When the Democrats broke the quorum in the Texas legislature, that was illegal. Remember, they could have been arrested for that. Judge Pierce can't send state troopers to go and round up uh, Jason Corley and, and and George Rackler. He he can't do that. He he can't send the sheriff's department to go and round them up and bring them back. No. But the Democrats have been rounded up before when they've left to go and break. Uh, they've broken quorum and they they've uh, left to go somewhere. Now, of course, Phelan should have done more to punish the Democrats. He could have, but he never did. That's a whole different discussion, though. But what the Democrats did was illegal. What Corley and Rackler are doing, it's it's absolutely legal. And, and Curtis Parrish was uh, making a point yesterday 
in his uh, press conference, in his whiny press conference, that uh, you know that that this is this is a, an artifact. This is just oh, it's just something left over. It has nothing to do. This is just wrong. It's a loophole. It's something that is legal. It is something that has been used by other county commissioners. So uh, th- this idea that uh, the county will fall apart if we don't spend more money, if we don't, uh, if we don't raise taxes, that the county will fall apart is is ludicrous. It's absolutely ludicrous. Uh, Sheriff Rowe had requested eight additional deputies to help combat crime. Now he's expecting half of that number. Well, okay, this is a real easy fix. Because the complaint has been, if you haven't been able to fill those other positions, why increase the positions? If you haven't been able to fill those four positions yet, why are we increasing it to another four positions when you haven't been able to fill those first four? Here's a solution. Fill the first four, and if we need to fill another four positions we can dip into some uh, reserves and hand over some money uh, for the uh, new employees over at the Lubbock County Sheriff's Department. I think we can fix it that way. We'll be right back. The Chad Hasty Show, a presentation of the Texas Town Square Media Network. The views and opinions expressed during the Chad Hasty Show are not necessarily the views of this station staff, management, advertisers, or Town Square Media. Broadcasting from the great state of Texas, this is the Chad Hasty Show. News and views with a Lone Star perspective. You can sound off during the show by sending Chad a text at 806-680-2790. That's 806-680-2790. Or call in at 1-800-687-0790. Now, here's Chad Hasty. The Chad HD Show. Uh, appreciate you tuning in today. You can send in your thoughts on the uh, text line 806-680-2790. That's 806-680-2790. Uh, you can sound off on any of the topics uh, of the day. And uh of course, uh, weigh in on uh, any of the uh, topics. We'll have Nick's final question of the week. Uh, we'll get to that here in just a, uh, a few minutes. Uh, let's see. You can text in at 806-680-2790. Uh, we've been asking you uh, your favorite queso. Uh, also, uh, best fear foods. Another texture says uh, George's Cafe. Uh, another texture with Orlando's, yep. Uh, of course, with uh, Caprock, very good. Uh, let's see, uh, Jimenez Bakery. Okay, yeah, they they've got uh, they've got uh, they've got uh, really good. It's uh, uh, Jimenez is very good now off of Thirty uh, Fourth Street. Good stuff. And then uh, I love going by there on Saturdays. They've got the uh, their uh, smoked barbacoa uh, burritos. So good, so good. 806-680-2790. Gwen in Lubbock, Curtis Parish has solidified my distrust and dislike of men that wear bow ties. How about rolling back some of those salary increases they voted for themselves? That from Gwen. Uh, going, yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, the, oh, the bow tie. Gotta love the bow tie. Uh, let's see, another texture weighing in. On uh, all of this, why was UMC involved? UMC was involved, uh, it, and I don't think uh, Funderburg actually showed up to this, uh, but the the excuse uh, from UMC was, uh, let's see, adopting the no new revenue, uh, revenue rate would take away 
funding for indigent care, preventing low-income families access to health care services. Oh, okay, so so poor families won't have access to health care services? B.S. There are plenty of places for low-income families to go and get health care services, including at the hospitals. And am I am I wrong about this? Hasn't UMC been building some, you know, like, new places all around? I mean, is UMC about to run out of money? Is that what they're afraid of? Is is is, is that what's going on? Is UMC at risk of uh, losing out on a lot of money? Because they, they sure have been building uh, new things. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe they have to rearrange their uh, priorities some. I don't know. Again, I'm not too worried about uh, about uh, about the uh, indigent care issue. I think that will take care uh, of itself. People will still show up to the hospitals. Uh, people will still show up to the medical clinics and other uh, services that are out there. There are even some nonprofit services that are out there for indigent care. 806-680-2790. I'm still, uh, I, 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 I haven't seen anything to uh, sway me to uh, uh, think that Corley and Rackler should show up and uh, vote for a higher tax rate. have not seen anything yet uh, to uh, sway me to the other side. 806-680-2790. That's 806-680-2790. Nine zero. How about this? Washington Post Secret Service is responsible for the multiple security failures in the Trump attack on July 13th. The Secret Service is responsible for multiple security failures that led to the July 13th assassination attempt against former President Donald Trump, the Republican candidate for president at a campaign rally in Butler, Pennsylvania, according to results from the first report on the attack released today. The elite protective agency's internal review found that agents failed to use technology that may have detected the attacker as he flew a a drone over the rally venue hours earlier. That's right. He flew a drone over the venue. And again, Nothing was done. Nothing was said. No one stopped him. Trump's protective detail had no idea that police were frantically searching for a suspicious person until shots were fired into the crowd. How does how do they not tell the protective detail that that's going on? The Secret Service, which is the lead agency in charge of security for presidents, former leaders, and other top U.S. officials never directed local police snipers to cover a nearby rooftop, even though snipers were willing to do it. Thomas Matthew Crooks was able that day to uh, get atop a roof of the Butler Farm Show uh, where the rally was held, fire multiple shots, killing uh, one rally goer, wounding Trump and two others. A Secret Service sniper stationed near Trump returned fire, killing him. The official report is sparse, a five-page summary of the agency's internal investigation is so uh, far into its organizational culture, leadership, and staff to identify potential causes for mission failure at the rally and ways to improve. Many of the findings are already public through media reports and other congressional hearings. The report is a 60-day internal review that then-director Kimberly Cheadle said was underway immediately after the shooting. She had been reluctant to share early details of the inquiry with Congress, leading to frustrated lawmakers calling for her to resign. She stepped down days later. Well, she needed to resign. She needed to be fired. So it's important we hold ourselves accountable for the failures of July 13th and use the lessons learned to make sure that we do not have another failure like this again, said Ronald Rowe Jr., uh, who became the acting director on July 23rd. Uh, Rowe said that the review found flaws in both the planning ahead of Trump's visit and its implementation. The security breaches were due in part to complacency by agents. They said that uh, employees involved will be held accountable, whatever that means. 
He repeatedly declined to elaborate on specific discipline that they could face. Roe also declined to say how many agents could face discipline, but said he would. Uh, he has not asked anyone to retire. But they're going to face, I guess, some type of punishment. We'll see. People need to be fired for this. More than just the, the, the head of the Secret Service, there need to be people who... Uh, if they were complacent, how can you be complacent? Your job is to protect someone. Like That's it. That is your job. Your job is to protect that one person. You can't be complacent. I guess you could be complacent when they fall asleep. But otherwise, if you're with them, if you're trying, if your job is to protect that person, uh, complacency gets people killed. You can't do it. You can't be complacent. If you've got officers who are complacent, they need to go. We can't have a Secret Service that is complacent. We can't have a Secret Service that cannot adequately protect a a president or a former president. It cannot be allowed. Representative Mike Kelly and Jason Crow, the leaders of the bipartisan House Task Force investigating the July 13th attack, said Roe must hold employees accountable for security lapses. Quote, complacency has no place in the Secret Service. Very good. The lawmaker said in a statement, the House Friday voted unanimously to pass a bill that would ensure the Secret Service provides the same protection to presidential and vice presidential, uh, vice presidential candidates as it does the sitting president and vice president. The measure, called the Enhanced Presidential Security Act, now heads to the Senate. The House voted to expand the task force's probe into Sunday's incident in Florida. Roe uh, said Trump is already getting the highest level of Secret Service protection, similar to Biden, after receiving more, quote, robust security than any other former president since leaving office. Well, he's a former president who may very well be the next president. Now, there are former presidents who, uh, once they leave, they they they're gone. They retire. They they may uh, do a few a uh, few things here and there, but you really don't see them in public very often. You don't see them out campaigning uh, very often. Not anymore. So it's good that this is coming out. It's good that more invest- investigations are happening, and. Uh, Hopefully we'll get more answers. We need more answers as to who this shooter uh, was and why he did this. 806-680-2790. When we come back, your phone calls, your text. We'll get Nick's final question of the week as well. When we come back. The Chad Hasty Show can be heard all over West Texas, weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Tune in on News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO in Lubbock, News Talk 940 in Amarillo, News Talk 94.7 and 1470 KYYW in Abilene, and in Wichita Falls on News Talk 96.3 and 1290. The Chad Hasty Show. Make it a part of your drive home, weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. I answered the call. Together, we fought for our nation and its people. And even though I no longer wear the uniform, I am still a Marine. My service has come full circle. I will continue to support my country and my community. Then and now, Semper Fidelis remains my promise. Always faithful, always Marine.
Tasty Show. You can send in your thoughts on the text line, 806-680-2790. In-person voting for this year's presidential election began Friday in some areas, a milestone that kicked off a six-week sprint to Election Day after a summer of political turmoil. Voters lined up to cast their ballots in Minnesota, South Dakota, and Virginia, the states with the first early in-person voting opportunities, about a dozen more states, will follow by mid-October. At a polling site in Minneapolis, Jason Miller arrived well before the polls opened at 8 a.m. was the first in line. He was among roughly 75 people who cast ballots on the first hour of the city's uh, early voting center. He said, quote, why not be the first? It's kind of fun, right? The 37-year-old house painter said uh, he said he uh, voted against crazy but did not want to name his choice for president. Uh, let's see. I'm sure he voted uh, in Minnesota. Yeah, probably a Democrat. Probably a Democrat. Uh, 806-680-2790. You can send in your thoughts. So, yeah, you already have people voting. You already have uh, ballots being cast uh, in the U.S., and you still have a vice presidential debate to go, which, you know, really, the the the, the best case scenario for those, do no harm. <laughs> do no harm to, uh, to, to the uh, top of the ticket. That's really what you're aiming for if you're... Uh, if you're J.D. Vance, yeah, you probably want to get in some some uh, some punches uh, on uh, on Tim Walls. You want to uh, uh, you want to remind people who Kamala Harris is, and uh, you know that that's that that's what I'm interested in seeing is uh, how much does J.D. Vance really go after Kamala Harris? You know, I, I think that will be uh, something uh, something interesting to watch. But uh, otherwise, most people don't really care about the VP debate. It's really not a big deal. Uh, and you just, you don't want to do any harm to uh, your, uh, to the to the top of the ticket. That's uh, really what you want to avoid. Uh, 806-680-2790. You can uh, send in your thoughts on the text line. Uh, let's see, on the app chat, Chad, a lot of people are uh, making it a big deal that uh, Kamala Harris owns a gun. What do you think? Uh, I, I'm not surprised at all that she owns a gun. I'm not surprised by that. Uh, it, it, a lot of Democrats actually have guns. Now, they don't want you to have uh, your your weapon of choice, but they, if they're an elected official, if they are a, in a position of power, well, you bet they want a gun. Or at least they want to be surrounded by people who have guns. You know, they want to protect themselves. They want to make sure they're safe. They don't want to make sure you're safe. You're, you're, you don't really matter. But uh, Kamala Harris, of course, she would be silly not to have people surrounding her with uh, with firearms. I mean, that's just uh, uh, that, that's that 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 that's how uh, every person should be. You should you should want to be able to defend yourself. What separates the the far left or what separates the Democrats from the Republicans is uh, we believe that you have a right to defend yourself. You have a right to uh, to to stand up uh, and protect yourself against a tyrannical government. And yes, those who want to do you harm. Uh, the Democrats believe that uh, well, if you want to go hunting with a gun, that might be okay. Maybe it depends on the firearm. But really, you don't need you don't need more than one, and we can restrict everything about that firearm. And uh, if you want, like a, a uh, uh, if you want a, a different uh, different type of firearm than what uh, than what we say is okay to have, uh, we're going to ban it. That's why you hear a lot of Democrats who uh, go around going, "Well, you know, I'm a hunter." You know, whenever they talk about the Second Amendment, you'll you'll hear a lot of Democrats who go, "You know, I was." I grew up in a house, uh, you know, where uh, guns were present. Uh, I'm a hunter. I'm an avid hunter. So, of course, I'm okay with guns. We just want common sense gun legislation, which really what that means is we want to take your guns away. Uh, you may be able to own a, uh, a, a, a firearm. You may be able to, uh, to own a Glock, 
but we want to take away your AR-15. We want to take those uh, weapons of, uh, quote-unquote, weapons of war. We want to take those away from you. Story from the uh, Washington Post. During a stream of town hall discussion hosted by Oprah, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris offered a bit more detail to her comment at this uh, month's presidential debate about owning a firearm. Quote, I'm a gun owner. Tim Walls is a gun owner, Harris said, referring to herself and her running mate. Uh, then with a chuckle, she added, if somebody breaks into my house, they're going to get shot. The crowd laughed, as did the vice president. Of course you did. Well, I probably should not have said that. My staff will deal with that later. For many Americans, it's likely a surprising aspect of Harris's comment uh, that she, a black Democrat woman, has a gun in her house. Democrats are understood to be the anti-gun party, and Harris is that party's nominee. No, listen, there are a lot of Democrats who do have guns. Again, they, they really do want to protect themselves. Uh, Democrat politicians, they want to be protected. You don't think Bernie Sanders wants to be protected? Of course he does. You've never heard of a Democrat president getting up there and defunding the U.S. Secret Service. That never has happened. You've never heard of that. You've never seen a Democrat president get up and say, you know what, I, we don't need the beast. I, when I travel, I don't need the Secret Service. I don't want it. We need to defund the Secret Service. We need to get rid of it. Oh, they need to carry water guns. We don't want them to carry real firearms. You've never heard a Democrat say that. I can almost guarantee you every single Democrat president that's ever been sworn in, they are so happy to have the U.S. Secret Service. They're so happy to be surrounded by people with guns. And when you want to take people's rights away, when you want to uh, take people's guns away, again, you want to be surrounded with people with guns. You want to make sure they have your back. So, yeah, sure, Kamala Harris, she, and I applaud her for wanting to defend herself and defend her home. I think that's great and wonderful. Might be the first time I applaud Kamala Harris. Maybe the last time I applaud Kamala Harris. The difference is she wants to take those rights away from you. Whereas Republicans want you to keep those rights. When we come back, your phone calls, your text, and more. to the Chad Hasty Show at 1-800-687-0790. The Chad Hasty Show, broadcasting on the Texas Town Square Media Network. Today's markets from the Texas Department of Ag. The howdy neighbors, Texas feed cattle auction reported prices steady, but cattle futures were up. October live cattle futures up $1.67, closed at $179.97. September feeder cattle futures up $2.45, closed at $245.27. October cotton futures up, closed at $71.58. December wheat futures down $0.14, cents, closed at $5.64 a bushel. December corn down $0.07, cents, closed at $4.06 a bushel. November soybeans down a penny to close at ten thirteen, And October soybean mill futures up 2 bucks, closed at $319.90 per ton. September class three milk futures up three pennies, closed at twenty three thirty three a hundred. October crude oil futures up a dollar seven, trading at seventy one ninety eight per barrel, and the Dow Jones is up five hundred and twenty two points, closed at forty two thousand twenty five. And that's market roundup from the Texas Department of Agriculture. I'm your commissioner, Sid Miller, and remember, friends, Texas agriculture matters. Sold. The news and talk of West Texas. News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO. Chad Hasty talking the news at the start, middle, and end of your drive home and when news breaks. 
This is the Chad Hasty Show. Chad AC Show, appreciate you being out there. As we uh, get you ready for your weekend, you can uh, send in your text at 806-680-2790. That's 806-680-2790. Again, you can call in 1-800-687-0790. And uh, now it's time. Let's uh, get go ahead and get Nick's final question of the week. Nick, what's uh, what, what is your final question? I I, I think yours was uh, uh, best queso. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we got some queso. So uh, Sunday is a national ice cream cone day. It is. Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay. So my my final question of this week. Uh, it, 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 it's an optional two, two-parter. two Okay. If you want to provide a, a second answer, you can. What is the uh, 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 the best ice cream flavor? Mm. I feel like that's a uh, that's a classic. We always... It's uh, a good one. Uh, we like that one. Uh, and then uh, uh, where do you get that? To? Where do you get... The, where, where's your favorite ice cream shop? Oh, that's, shop? that's good. There's yeah. so many different places. There are. And they serve so many different flavors. Yeah. So much to choose from. But what is... Your favorite, mm. uh, you know. Sometimes I just like a good uh, a, a good vanilla bean. That doesn't surprise me at Vanil- all. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. Thank no, you. I'm just saying uh, it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> surprise me at all that you just like a simple vanilla. That was my nickname, actually, too. Yeah. Uh, simple vanilla was a, a nickname <laughs> I went by. Uh, I mean, I, I just don't want. I don't want. I'm not a big dessert guy. I don't want all the sweets. Yeah. I don't want. You know, that's too flashy. You don't, you don't need anything flashy. I don't need any of that. Just yeah. give me the just, the good old yeah uh, uh, good old American vanilla. That's right. Uh, that's all I need. Um, you know, it, it, I may go crazy and do. Uh, 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 actually, it just dawned on me. You know what? Peach, peach ice cream. Peach ice cream is very good. Yeah, peach okay. ice cream. I highly okay. recommend it. Um, but uh, you know, it, it. I don't know. I, I don't do desserts very much. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So. No, ice cream's good. Ice cream's good. Um, I, I've got a couple. You know, uh, Holly Hops here in Lubbock, mm-hmm. uh, the little, little local place. Very yep. good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll say I'll, I'm going to give them a little bit of love. Brahms. You know, not not bad, not a bad place. Go through, get you a little ice cream cone. Sure. Uh, head out. Uh, you you've got, uh, of course, I'm, I am Bluebell, all team Bluebell, all the way. Go mm-hmm. ahead and get you a gallon, and uh, and be happy. Uh, cookies, cookies and cream. Really? Yeah, cookies and cream. I have to say, probably. Oh, sorry, no. Cookie dough is my least favorite. Yeah. <laughs> cookie dough. I don't like the. I do not like the cookie dough. But cookies and cream is very good. Yeah. Oreo. Yes. AKA cookies and cream. Yes. Very delicious. Yes, absolutely. Cookies yes. It, it's it's again, it's not flashy. No. But it's just it's it just adds a little something. It's your grassroots ice cream. Yes. Nothing extra. You yeah. don't need anything extra. Mm-hmm. No, no pomp. Nothing. No. Yeah. And uh throw that in a see my wife will get like a sugar cone. She'll get like one of the little sugar cone uh uh you know when when we go and get ice cream. Sure. Me, waffle cone. Really? Yeah, waffle cone. Give me the big waffle cone. When, w- do you think that I like to eat uh, ice cream cones, or do you think I would prefer a bowl? I see you as a bowl guy. <laughs> yeah, I like the bowl guy. I see you as the bowl guy. <laughs> I see you. We don't want to make any make anything dirty. Don't want to get any ice cream on the fingers just in case it melts. Too much work. You got to you gotta hold the cone. Work. You got to <laughs> hold the cone. Then you have to eat the cone. And there's it's just too, too much. much going on. Yeah. Just put it right there in the... Just it, put that vanilla ice cream in a bowl. Give then, me a spoon. Sir, would you like a uh, a waffle bowl? No. <laughs> no I no, just no. give me a simple container that where I can throw I can, away later. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's you. That's me. Yeah. I've always been a bowl guy. Uh, I don't know what it is. I uh even even growing up as as a lad. Yeah. I remember our uh, uh in like second grade. I think it was every Friday, the cafeteria right after school, after the buses uh, are, are, have left. 
the uh, the cafeteria would give out like uh, free ice cream cones. Mm. So if you if you're staying a little late, if you had uh, you know tutoring, or if your parents were late picking you up. Just go get a free uh, free ice cream cone. Yeah. Uh, I never did that. No, you wanted a little bowl. I, know, I, I wanted a bowl. They didn't offer bowls. I said, no ice cream for me then, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> a bowl or nothing. <laughs> turned it down. I did. I did. Oh, uh, you turned down ice cream because, of, hey, I've got some uh, some interesting study. Well, I, maybe they're interesting. I don't know. Uh, but some uh, some some uh, different studies uh, here. How about this? A couple of different uh, studies. Uh, something amazing happens when humans stare into a dog's eyes. Do you ever stare into your dog's eyes? Do you ever, like, look at them and make eye contact? Well, in a eye-opening pet discovery, get it? Researchers have found that when humans and dogs interact, it literally changes the way a pet's brain works. It turns out that when you stare into your dog's adorable puppy eyes, it's doing a lot more than just... Uh, tugging at your heartstrings, it's syncing up the dog's brain with yours. The inner brain coupling, as scientists call it, sheds new light on the deep bond between humans and their canine companions. It may even hold clues for understanding and treating autism in humans. The study published in the Journal of Advanced Science used cutting-edge techniques called dual EEG to simultaneously measure brain activity in both humans and dogs as they engaged in typical bonding behaviors like petting and gazing into each other's eyes. I don't like how they write this. It sounds really weird, but I, I see what they're going. I, I see where they're going here. Uh, they found that certain regions of human and dog's brains actually fell into a sink during these interactions, showing coordinated patterns of activity. Even more uh, intriguingly, the brain synchronization seemed to follow a leader-follower dynamic with the human brain activity leading and the dog brain following. This mirrors a social dynamic between humans and dogs where the uh, humans typically take on the leadership role. However, the implications of the discovery go far beyond just understanding the human dog bond. Uh, researchers also looked at dogs with mutations in a gene, uh, a gene strongly linked to autism in humans. These dogs show disrupted brain synchronization when interacting with humans, mirroring social difficulties seen in human autism. In a surprising twist, the researchers found a single dose of uh, the psychedelic drug LSD appeared to rescue this impaired brain synchronization in Shank 3 mutant dogs. So I guess they gave the dogs some LSD. Uh, it's far too early to draw clinical conclusions. This finding hints at potential new avenues for autism research and treatment. So Nick, when you go home, look into your dog's eyes and the brains will sync together. That's uh, That's what the... Uh, that's what they say. Lawrence weighed in, uh, saying, I agree with Holly Hops. Uh, so uh, so simple vanilla instead of Wisconsin white. I couldn't help myself. Please forgive me, Nick. Let's see. Another text. Uh, Tillamook uh, Wild Mountain Blackberry. Hard to find here. Dave from Lubbock. Let's see. Another texter. Uh, Rick weighing in. When I stare at my dog, he gets mad and starts barking at me. It sounds like I should be barking back at him. You should. You just look at your dog and go. Rup. Yeah, I think that's that's what you're supposed to do. So uh, yeah, that's a, that's a new study uh, that's out. Uh, another study out there. This is sad. Shocking number of parents say their kids have no friends. A recent, uh, let's see, this out of Ann Arbor, Michigan, a bustling playground of ch uh, childhood. Friendships are often taken for granted with kids easily bonding while sharing a uh, swing or trading snacks at lunchtime. For many kids, however, the art of making friends is not as simple as it seems. A recent study from the University of Michigan has uncovered an often overlooked aspect of childhood development, fi uh, a new finding was a surprising number of children struggling to make friends. The fa in fact, the poll finds that one in five parents fear their child currently has no friends at all. Imagine being a kid without a 
friend to share your favorite video game with or someone to sit next to on the school bus. It's a reality for more children than we might think. Out of a, uh, in a poll of 1,031 parents with kids between the ages of 6 and 12 years old, 20% of kids potentially feel lonely or isolated during their crucial years of social development. Quote, friendships can play a significant role in the child's overall health and development, emotional well-being, self-esteem, and social skills. So, how about that? Uh, you can, uh, a, lot of, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of kids out there, no friends, no friends at all. 806-680-2790. You can send in. No, we're not talking about the dogs doing drugs. David on the uh, app chat weighing in. Uh, what was that? Dogs want LSD? No. No, no, no. They were just doing some testing on that. Don't give LSD to your dog. Please do not do that. That would not be good. 806 806- Six eight zero two seven nine zero. When we come back, your phone calls, your text, and we'll begin to wrap things up. The Titan of Texas Talk Radio. Chad Hasty talking with newsmakers and about the issues that matter to you. The Chad Hasty Show, weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Chad's show is also digital with the Chad Hasty Show podcast. The Chad Hasty Show podcast can be downloaded on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, and the Radio On Demand page at KFYO.com. The Chad Hasty Show, all across Texas during your drive home, weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. I'm Ryan Seacrest. First responders are people who stand for a greater purpose. They will be there for you when nobody else is, to help you, your family, your community. This is their selfless promise. This is their sworn duty, to protect, to serve, to help. When you call 911, first responders show up now. Let's show up for the people who show up for us every day and every night. Go to firstrcf.org and make a difference today. Chad HD Show. Another week in the books. Just like that. You can uh, follow me on social media at Chad HD Radio. You can also uh, download the uh, latest podcast available on uh, really any of your podcast platforms. Uh, just search for the Chad HD Show. Also search for Current and Cask. That's the uh, podcast that Matt Martin and I do where we Review whiskey, talk uh, everyday life, a little bit of sports, technology, and current events. Both current and cask, and also the Chad Easty Show. Absolutely free to download and subscribe to on your favorite podcast platforms. Text your weighing in. Uh, Mike from the left coast to chat as a kid. My grandparents put uh, cold black coffee Vanilla in our vanilla ice cream, I highly recommend it. Nick, you're shaking your uh, nodding. Uh, you, you recommend the uh, coffee in the ice cream? No, okay, you try it. Uh, let's see. Oh, crotchety Ben Runkle uh, weighed in from Bovina. Dear Chad, are you high? Dog talk tells me you may do drugs. Dogs eat their own crap. Stop trying to communicate. Uh, and bind to just feed them and be nice. Sincerely, Ben Runkle and Bovina, where they don't try to uh, mind meld with dogs. See, I always pictured Ben Runkle, and I don't know about you, but I, I always pictured him as a as a cat guy. That uh, that, that he was more of a cat guy than uh, someone who had dogs. You know, because he, he's he's got uh, Ben Runkle kind of has that eh whatever attitude, and so do cats. Cats kind of have that. We're gonna do whatever we want. We don't need really need you. And from what I hear, cats also don't like post. And so 
Uh, that's that's something that we know Ben does not like. He does not like the entire city of, of Post for whatever reason, although he did leave them alone tonight, which uh, that, that was kind of him to do. 806-680-2790. One more study. American Breaking Point, 41% say they're at peak stress right now. Which I don't know how you could be at peak stress right now. Just wait until uh, the the holiday season. That's that for many people. That's peak stress. Uh, in a year marked by financial worries and political tension, a uh, survey has uncovered a staggering impact of stress on everyday Americans. The average person feels their head is spinning from stress a whopping 156 times per year. The alarming statistic, Nick's over there going, that's every day. Every 156 times a day is what I feel. The alarming statistic, one of many eye-opening findings from a recent survey conducted by uh, talk, talker research for traditional uh, medicinals, the survey polling 2,000 adults found that 41% of respondents are currently experiencing their peak stress level for the year, even more concerning, Americans say they uh, experience brain fog with the same frequency as a stress headache three times a week, while 30% of those surveyed remain hopeful that their stress level will decrease by the end of the year. 45% of respondents have never taken a mental health day or sick day from work due to stress. They're stressed out that they would either get fired, I guess, or fall behind or whatever. Hmm. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take some time to enjoy the weekend. Looks like we may get some rain in the area. That'll be nice. Some cooler temperatures throughout the state going into next week. We'll take that. Fall officially arrives on Sunday. So enjoy the weekend. Spend some time with family and friends. Go out to a festival, a fair. Watch a little TV. Grill out some. Just enjoy the days. Follow me on social media at Chad HD Radio. Stay safe. Stay healthy. God bless you all. We'll see you back here Monday at 5. Expect to see me now at any time When you're in my arms, I'll be fine The Chad Hasty Show, a presentation of the Texas Town Square Media Network. The views and opinions expressed during the Chad Hasty Show are not necessarily the views of this station staff, management, advertisers, or Town Square Media.